Ladies and gentlemen out there, uh, this is Artie Lang. This is disgusting. Everybody's too nice now. We're all so nice, aren't we? But the thing is, we're not nice. Secretly, we're mean. That's essentially the show. It is funny. I cannot be a bigger just blob of nothingness and negativity. Party time. You want to get a little limbo dance going? Come on, I'll do it. The, the third person at the table was the bottom of my stomach. <laughs> with hair and paleness and stretch marks. American nightmare. <laughs> Wait like a smart. And this talks about every controversial subject you can imagine. Shock, shock, Artie Lang on Media Day. Can't be with that sweet stuff. Nah. Smack the sugar right out of you. Welcome to The Breakfast Show, the Artie Quitter podcast on a blustery, blustery January day here from Hoboken, New Jersey. We are, I don't know if I fully explained this, uh, I'll set the setting here. Uh, we're in my condo in Hoboken, New Jersey, on uh, one of the top floors with a terrace looking at the Freedom Tower, and we, we look directly at New York City. I'm looking at the Empire State Building right now. I have basically a painting of New York City. It's the best view of New York you could possibly get, from I think from any side, but definitely from the Jersey side. Joe Matarish, your thoughts? I, I agree with you, and it, it was really sunny when we first uh, when I first walked up here. Yeah, and it's now getting, it's fogging in. It looks it, like San Francisco. It out does. There. It's blustery, but it's by the. It looks like San Francisco. It's it's windy. It's it's foggy, and there's a guy blowing some guy right underneath here. <laughs> I do have a complaint. I, I've been trying to listen to more news because I've been on your podcast all week. And, right. Well, and what it, is this like? You think it's like the five on Fox News? Or I, I have to study for it a little yeah. bit. I, I'm, I'm not. Well, I appreciate that. Joe. Jesus Christ. But listening to 880 is the fucking weather every three seconds. I'm like, we know. No, but but you don't understand. You got. Let me explain uh, radio news to you. They, they all about turnover. They're all about someone getting in the car, getting out of the car. It's time and weather and traffic. Boom, boom, boom. They just give you the fucking headlines, man. I, I really wish there was a station that I could just tune in that would just give me, like you're saying, because I don't feel that it is the headlines. It's more well, weather and local shit that doesn't matter. But if you're a, it's a commuter uh, station. If you're a commuter, dude. What's more important than the weather? You know what I mean? It's but like, you got it. You can look outside. Got, Twelve people got shot in Paris, but if you're looking to get from Brooklyn to Queens, that's not that's not affecting your day. <laughs> I get the traffic, <laughs> yeah. but I don't need the weather that often. Uh, okay, it doesn't change. You're, calm, I, I get, calm the fuck down. No, I I agree with you. I agree with you. Maybe it's a bit much. It doesn't change, but it will change. Is the point? I'm, Your point is wrong. I'm trying to study for the Artie Quitter podcast, <laughs> and I, I'm like, all right, I don't, I don't, what's Artie going to talk about? Nah, well, today? listen, well, I, mean, I, I want to bring this up because it's in our face. Uh, this fucking 12 people shot in Paris. Okay, and guess why? Because a, a satirical newspaper, this paper uh, supposedly is kind of like a, a more political, well, not more political, that's a bad way to put it, uh, uh, maybe a little bit more of a serious version of The Onion, but it's satirical. The Onion being a great, great comedy, uh, uh, satir satirical comedic newspaper here in the States. I'm a big fan of The Onion. But that's kind of like what this was. It was the Parisian or the French version of, uh, of that. It was pretty big in Europe. And they had the audacity to make fun of Muhammad in a cartoon. To fuck with a, a Muslim. These people are out of fucking control. It's the only religion where if you make fun of someone in the religion, they will execute you. That's it, man. They have decided that you make fun of us or anybody in it, or our God or supposed God, unlike Christians where you could fuck with them uh, like crazy. Jews, you know, make fun of themselves and are very self-deprecating. And if someone else makes fun of them, they have to deal with it because it's freedom of speech. Uh, the Protestants would pick one, a Baptist, Muslims, man. Uh, and there's a lot of great Muslims. I understand it, but there's a lot of them, clearly too much of them now, too many of them now, where they have decided that if you fuck with us, you're dead. You're a dead person. Like not, we're going to publicly mess with you, insult you. We're going to kill you. We're going to get AK-47s. We're going to train people to come out and execute you. And if you watch the footage... These guys, uh, you know, cl and it's clearly uh, Muslim terrorists on some level. Uh, they're trying to figure out, you know, where exactly they were from or where they were trained. But uh, I think they're part of a higher organization. Maybe it's ISIS. Who knows what it is? But they were clearly trained 
in the art of attacking people with guns, these guys. They were pros, dressed all in black like ninjas with AK-47s or M-16s, whatever the fuck the gun is they use. And they casually got out of a car that looks like, by the way, the car, very unmacho. Uh, that car is not a penis extension these terrorists were using. That, that looks like a, a, a Kia. <laughs> they got out of a Kia very casually, executed a bunch of people who were in, they knew that they were going to be uh, in the offices today. Because nowadays with computers, not a lot of people who work as journalists go into offices. They write their shit from home or on a laptop, wherever they are iPad, whatever the fuck. But they knew today, for some reason, a lot of people were going to be in the offices of this paper. And they they casually walked in, executed whoever they could, including a guy named Charlie Hebdo, who I guess was the editor of the paper. And, you know, uh, was responsible for these cartoons, making fun of Muhammad or, or, or making fun of Muslims. And uh, executed him along with 11 other people, including a couple of Paris cops. There's one shot... They don't show the whole video because it's probably too disturbing. A cop is on the ground, on the ground with his hands up. You know, and you think maybe this guy's a wife and a couple of kids trying to appeal to this motherfucker with the gun. You could almost see him saying, look, I, I got a family. Don't do it. Please, please don't shoot me. And he executes him in cold blood. Four inches from the guy's head. He just lets him have it. it I'm, wa I'm watching the CNN yeah. clip with you and it's... It's kind of a, they weren't running. They're kind of like moseying around. These like, guys was are, there no chase? You know why? Because they feel they're so they're so confident that they're right, and they got away. They got away very easily. And again, executed a cop at point blank range and a bunch of people who worked for this paper because the paper had the audacity to goof on Muslims in a cartoon. Uh, no other religion does this. And I got to say, the only guy in, in the media who really hammers that home in a politically incorrect way, uh, which is the right uh, attitude to have now, is Bill Maher. Uh, I think Bill Maher is a smart, funny guy. I think he's an enormous asshole. But uh, I think he's smart and he's funny. And he points this out. He's the only one with balls to point out. It's the only religion where if you're gay, you're dead. If you're, ch if you're committing adultery, you're dead. Or you have to leave the country because we'll kill you. If uh, a woman is promiscuous, dead. Stoned to death. Not sh stoned to death. And, you know, Bill Maher, of course. You know, it's like, oh, oh, yeah, I guess another religion. I guess another religion would do this. I guess Catholics execute you. Okay, you're right. You're right. The Muslims don't kill people for being gay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when someone says something like that, you can't help but disagree with everything they're saying. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, the way goofs on religion... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you believe in God. You know why? Because you're stupid. <laughs> if you believe in God, you're stupid. <laughs> you know why you believe in God? Because you're dumb. <laughs> and I'm smart. You know what Bill Maher is? Bill Maher is a real live version. You know the character Andy Kaufman used to do when he wrestled? People? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would wrestle people in Memphis, like women. Oh, and, yeah. And he'd get, you know, he would purposely bait them about, you know, wrestling women and they would get mad and Andy Kaufman in an ironic character would go I'm smart I'm from Hollywood you people are dummies from Memphis and the Midwest you're not as smart as me Bill Maher's actually that guy <laughs> <laughs> Bill Maher's do Bill Maher is the character the hateable character Andy Kaufman was and Bill Maher says smart funny things this is one of them. I agree with them completely that the Muslims are the, the they have to we have to get them in control somehow. My, we have to control the Muslims. But the, when he says it like you're stupid, the Muslims are being stupid. When he says it like that, you want to strangle him. <laughs> Joe, your thoughts. <laughs> My favorite Bill Mars and he's like the Mexicans <laughs> are taking all the good jobs <laughs> from Americans. Yeah. Are they? I guess they're not. <laughs> They're yeah. not the jobs you want. I guess you want to clean up the bathroom <laughs> at a rest stop diner. I guess that's what you want to do after you get out of Cornell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and I'm doing the hands too. But, um, but, but Maher, again, like with a lot of things, Bill Maher, I feel is right on the money with this. And he got into a famous argument with Ben Affleck on his show. And Ben Affleck, brilliant movie star. 
God, did he sound retarded? He just sounds like a dummy. He sounds like a big dumb movie star. Is what he sounds like when he's. And I don't. First of all, I don't believe. I don't believe for one fucking second that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon wrote that movie Goodwill Hunting. That was written by some old Jewish guy in 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 Cali. You know, they had an idea for a script based on a neighborhood that they're not from. You know who's the real deal? Mark Wahlberg's the real deal. That dude's from a neighborhood where, you know, you you, he, you didn't fuck with the Wahlbergs. They're, they're tough motherfuckers. Right. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck pretend to be that. I think they were like in the choir. You know? <laughs> totally uh, agree. Mark Wahlberg will knock you the fuck out. These guys, they, they, they wanted to be from Southie. They wanted to be from Southie, and they, they had an idea for a movie about a kid who's, you know, a brilliant kid from Southie. Right. Uh, well, that was, I, I think he had like a two a two-page book book report on it right and someone turned it and into the a book movie. report was uh, what what uh, supposedly this guy william goldman the legendary writer uh, wrote the script and and i guess took the money and didn't take credit and those two idiots get oscars for it and guess what guess what i was just about to do that. guess what they didn't write a thing first of all if you write a script like that where's the next script they wrote that's the uh, one uh, time uh, they wrote a script. Uh, if you write a script that and that listen i'll give them props that's a brilliant movie yeah. i love goodwill hunting but where's the next script <laughs> when you write a script that brilliant you usually write another one <laughs> you don't get a job at a diner <laughs> You know, where's their next fucking script? You know what? They don't have a next script because they didn't write the first one. <laughs> that and script is like like how a comedian treats a, a comedy roast. Usually you call all your best friends that exactly. are amazing and go, dude, give me sh These are the guys on the dais. What do you got? Uh, listen, and you I uh, I have an integrity thing where I don't I don't let anybody write my stand up. I write my No, own but when but I'm when on a roast, a roast, forget it. When I've done roasts, I, when uh, you, I've done a couple of the Comedy Central roasts, a bunch of Friars Club, a bunch of ones on Howard which were the most pressure because the ones on Howard were real roasts. They were live. They, Howard let you bomb. You heard no editing. Oh yeah. You heard you bombing. And I would, Frank Sebastiano, brilliant joke writer, a joke machine, guy I wrote Beer League with and who directed Beer League, brilliant guy. Uh, he's my first call. Guys like Nick DiPaolo, Joe Matarese has helped me out with jokes uh, for roasts. Thanks for throwing me. Uh, yeah, but uh, but yeah, that's what happens. You want to hear, <laughs> I'm not proud of this, but I'm being dead honest on the podcast. I, I, I told you yesterday the stuff I pitched at Mad TV, and we're going to expand, by the way. I'm doing a whole bit now. Sketch is already pitched at Mad TV. Which they <laughs> One was, uh, and again, Joe feels they should have done this. Uh, it was called How the Great Directors Got Their Start, and it was Martin Scorsese in the beginning to get a break and to get money uh, directed an episode of The Brady Bunch. And uh, we had, you know, uh, Peter beating, uh, Bobby beating the shit out of Peter for using the word stinker. And, uh, you know, Bobby, get the door. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a Brady. That's Joe's line. And Ben from Clifton. There we go. <laughs> it's the Brady Bunch. Is that the Brady Bunch? What's that? What is that? It's the almost <laughs> Brady Bunch. karaoke version of it. I had like, the real one. It sounded so. like the Almond Brady. <laughs> uh, James Slippin, by the way, behind the glass. He's our tech guy. Oh, there there he is. is. Uh, well, you know, we're going to get to this later. Ben from Clifton, real funny guy, a comic. He's contributing to the podcast. He wrote uh, as if uh, Scorsese uh, did the opening for the Brady Bunch. We have a song parody. It's really funny. Yeah, ben, let's hear this. We're going to. You're going to get to that? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Ben from but Clifton. I'm going to give it. So, so that's the first thing. The, the, the other thing I, I pitched was I did this in my audition. And then he wouldn't do it as a sketch because they thought they thought women wouldn't get it. The 14-year-old Urbans wouldn't get it who watched the show. Rush Limbaugh singing songs by Rush. Yeah, you got to um, do that. <laughs> today's Tom Sawyer. He gets high on you with the Spacey invades. He gets by on you. Living in the limelight. <laughs> I think you got to add do 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 the little guitar riff. Do 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 and his neighbors were the biggest assholes. He hated them. So he gets into a huge feud with his neighbors before he leaves for a three-week trip he's going on. He puts right next to where 
the, the, right next to his wall, on the other side of the walls where his neighbors slept, was their bed. He puts on a reel to reel on a loop, just the part that Crosby Stills and Nash Strong that goes do 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 on a reel, on a loop, like on a loop. That's all you heard. Do 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 do. Put the volume all the way up and left his apartment for three weeks. They went. That's his alarm system. No, he left his apartment, so they would hear that. When they tried to go to sleep, twenty four seven, they had a baby. They do 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 do, and the woman, the, they actually started to go crazy. The people mentally, they called the cops to break the door down. <laughs> um, okay, so I, I had a roommate like that. That's funny that you say that. Yeah, that he played the same Christmas song every day for hours right. over and over and uh, over because he was like trying to write a script yeah it was fun. i'm like dude we well that's it. what that's what this was like so that's the same and i've never told this anywhere because it is embarrassing and i admit this is racist i don't know what i was thinking but uh, a parody to goodwill hunting i pitched goodwill smith and will smith is the janitor <laughs> will, will smith, smith is the janitor at a high school <laughs> and the, the the thing the the problem on the board is two plus two mm -hmm. <laughs> And it took our professors five years to figure out this one. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like a name is an Andy voice. It took our professors five years to figure out two plus two equals four. <laughs> Goodwill Smith. I actually pitched that. The black kids in the cast wanted to hang me. <laughs> you want to hear one that I did? At a first, I didn't know what was wrong. I said, was something wrong with that? They're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's hilarious. I had one on stage that I used to do. It's fun. I used to do a lot of those, like, combinations. Well, that's what Mad, Mad Magazine combined. Right. Move, that's why the, the movie parodies were like that on Mad TV. We, we were trying to be like Mad Magazine. Right. I just did them. My, they combined two Mine titles. was uh, was a combination of Boy, the boy starring John Travolta, Boy in the Plastic Bubble, and Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> it was called Saturday Night Bubble. <laughs> oh, and, and I used to do a line on stage. I would go, <laughs> all day I work on my bubble and you hit it. That's all I remember. <laughs> I can't come out. Air you, makes me feel weird. You hit my bubble. <laughs> air makes me weird. Uh, that, that, <laughs> you know what's so great? That, that's a great reference that nobody gets. The anymore. boy in the plastic bubble. Because Travolta was in both of them. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I used to say his funniest movie was not a comedy, The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. That's well, actually funnier than the How many comedies has he made? Well, Saturday Night Fever. Uh, is really funny. Really funny. It's really funny. Yeah. But you don't think three men and a baby? Oh, he wasn't in three men and a baby. Was look, he in look that? who's talking. Was, look who's talking. I'm getting them combined. You're thinking of look who's talking and look who's yeah, talking yeah. too. Listen, I don't know if if every Christmas he should blow a Quentin Tarantino. I mean, his career was in the shitter, and now he has a 747 jet parked in his backyard <laughs> because he got he got in Pulp Fiction. I know. I always said, how did Travolta get all that cash? And somebody in show business told me this because he never had that TV syndication money that everybody wants. He was just in movies. You know what he got a piece I, of? I soundtracks. Yeah, yeah. The soundtrack to Saturday Night Fever, his deal was, and and Grease, he got a piece of those soundtracks. Well, he, which, he sang in all the songs. Right. That's right. Exactly. Yeah, I, don't so. think he, I don't know if he wrote them. But he got a piece. I think he might have wrote them. But he got it. I don't think he did. No? But he got a piece of the publishing as if he did, right? I think that's what happened. I right, here, here, Ben from Clifton Road. This is as if uh, Martin Scorsese, when he was young, to get money and get a break, directed the Brady Bunch. He, ben from Clifton sent this in. Here's how the opening song might have gone if it was about a mob family. Wait, wait. We need the karaoke version now. Do we have it? Wait, just just keep it low. I'll I'll talk over it. Can you get, you want to do karaoke or the? You got Artie Lang here. I mean, he's a, he'll talk right over that. I'll just he's yell. Professional. I could just yell. Just I'm not yell a, over. That's the thing. I'm not a professional. <laughs> I could just yell over. You ready? Is this it? This doesn't sound okay. Anything can we stop like for it. a second? Yeah. <laughs> that that's someone ripped you off, Jen. That that doesn't sound like that's the phrase. It is. It's dun, 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 dun. How about I just hum it and you sing it over? Wait, it. Here's the story of a guma named Tracy. Who was trying to raise three good for nothing girls? <laughs> All of them had serpent tongues, like their mother, the youngest one wore furs. <laughs> Here's the story of an earner named Tony, who was busy with three headaches of his own, just four jerk offs dealing with each other in a Cape Cod and Bayonne. <laughs> Well, one day, fucking Tony, he saw Tracy, and he knew he she shouldn't talk so very much. So he put her in a. So he put. Okay, wait a minute. I'm gonna do this again. 
Reset, reset. Reset, reset. Take two. Morton Scorsese. Ready? Here's a story of a guma named Tracy who was trying to raise three good-for-nothing girls. All of them had serpent tongues like their mother. The youngest one wore furs. Here's a story of an earner named Tony who was busy with three headaches of his own. Just four jerk-offs dealing with each other in a Cape Cod and Bayonne. Well, one fucking day, Tony, he saw Tracy and he knew she wouldn't talk so very much. So he put it in her head to form a family. That's the way they all became the Bruno Bunch. The Bruno Bunch. The Bruno Bunch. That's the way they all became the Bruno Bunch. Hey, what the fuck are you looking at, asshole? Keep that motherfucker here, Johnny. Get the door. <laughs> I'm, gonna the second sh- verse. I'm gonna shoot him in his big fucking mouth. The Bruno Bunch. Yeah. Hey, hey, Thank hey, you, hey. Ben from Clifton. That's as that's as good a that's as good a shot as a song party as you're gonna get. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you're a funny guy. You are a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> what the? You you were coming up with some good ones just Yeah. What 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 Brady Bunch scene can we work the year? You're funny guy into. Like, oh, is, is, is there is there one where one of them's trying to? Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Your voice is changing. Your voice is changing. Hey Peter, your voice is changing. Ha 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 ha. you've been a, you've been away a long time, Bobby. Maybe you don't remember. Hey, you know, no more changing voice. I'm all grown up. <laughs> <laughs> You've been away a long time, uh, Alice. Maybe you don't remember so good. I, I'm grown up now. What? No more change in voice. <laughs> nah, listen. Where? Yeah, everything's fine. I'm sorry. Now go change your fucking voice. <laughs> Try Motherfucker! Trying to remember some other classic. Yeah. Oh, my nose is a classic one. Oh, that's right. The football. The football on the nose. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, my nose. Mom always said, don't play ball in the house. Mom always said, don't run the numbers in the house. <laughs> uh, uh, no, Alice, uh, you know, the cooking scene at the end. Alice, I had bought some nice chicken cutlets for Alice. We were making them up. And uh, <laughs> the, and then Cindy, uh, Marsha was going to get on the plane to Pittsburgh. And we were, yeah, come on, we got to tape the cocaine to your legs, Marsha. <laughs> You would have never found it. Uh, that was for the guys in... Alice! Alice! What the fuck did you do, Alice? They never would have found that. They never would have found a towel. It was in Tigers. It was in Tigers. <laughs> Tigers. Doghouse in the backyard. You know. <laughs> they wouldn't have found it. They never would have found the towel, Alice. <laughs> you told them to put it in the hamper. They never would have found a towel. How did you do that, Alice? How did you do that? <laughs> I love that. I'm trying to remember more. Classic Brady Bunch episode. I love that. What do you got? We got uh, Truth or Dare. I don't recognize Goodwill that. Smith. The slumber Caper. Oh, oh, oh. Anybody Goodwill Smith? Oh, no. well, God. Well, the Silver Platters. That was a classic one. Yeah. Or the one where. What was their song? Their Wait a minute. Was that the name of the group they formed? Yeah, remember they needed to buy a silver platter How about for their the Pittsburgh, parents? The Pittsburgh they broke... Platters. <laughs> Isn't that when a, a, a horse shits on you? Or... The guy's my Pittsburgh platter connection. <laughs> Remember the Hawaii episode where he... That's right. Alice throws her back out. All these weird Alice coincidences happen the because thing, of the, yeah. the, uh, the, the idol. Tiki thing. The tiki, tiki thing. Yeah. With Vincent Price. Vincent Price, that's secret fruit. That's actually uh, one of the ah. only... Uh, give me the guitar. The Brady. The guitar, right? The Brady. One of the only things I can play on the guitar. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. It's... I guarantee you can't play this either. What are you trying to play? Whenever the, something bad happened with the on that Brady oh, Bunch like episode. A you actually know that, here, that riff? Here it is. <laughs> what? <laughs> Isn't that it? Who the fuck is that, Dan? Who's, who's beeping? Someone's at the door. <laughs> really? Bobby, get the door. Get the door. Who is that, Dan? Is that Brian Jones? By the way, we have a guest today. Jimmy Palumbo. Oh, Palumbo's here. Oh, Christ. Turn him away. <laughs> no, we love Jimmy. Jimmy's gonna come Get in and give door. us. His, Jimmy's gonna come in and give us his credits. <laughs> <laughs> Will he have a Rutgers shirt on? Jim, how many Law and Orders you wear? 
Uh, how many Law and Orders did you do? In the- <laughs> no, well, Brian Jones, who was on my direct TV show quite a bit, uh, is a football expert. Uh, he played college and, uh, and the pros. Five years in the NFL, and he's going to talk football. There's a lot of football going on. Again, my lock of the week, guys, is uh, 11. I guess that's a good lock. I like the Panthers uh, getting 11 from Seattle. I think Seattle it went up gonna, a half point. Gonna, I, no, it was it ten down. and a half. Yes, it was eleven and a half. It was eleven and a half. Yeah, it went down half a point. So I like I like Seattle and uh, a guy, my ex bookie, I was talking to today. Again, I do everything legal now. I got a guy at Mandalay Bay in the Mirage. Whatever, wink, wink, nod, nod. Uh, I talked to my ex bookie, and he was making an excellent point. He thinks the Packers are going to destroy the Cowboys in Lambeau, and that's hard to. Uh, that's hard to argue against. I mean, the, the the Cowboys have some momentum, but they almost lost to Detroit at home. They're going to have to score 70 points to beat the Packers is I there, mean, and Lambeau fans. Is there some sort of – was there some game where Green Bay played Dallas where Dallas ran up the points? Is that uh, – am I weird? I don't not know why this, I'm thinking that. Not this, not this year. But not to any of our players. Is there a, ri- a strong rival where these two teams hate each other? Uh, not recently, not – well, yeah, wait a minute. Look, the, they called the some people besides that Colts Giant game called the greatest game ever played. The Ice Bowl right. was was with Lombardi and Landry. The Ice Bowl was uh, was in Green Bay, and it was the Cowboys. They played the Cowboys. So since then, there's been a bit of a rivalry. Okay, but not in the last. Remember, like, Bart Starr was on a one yard line, and Lombardi goes, "Let's run this play and get the hell out of here." I swear, there's some play. Get where the they hell ran out of here. The, I'm thinking Eagles Dallas. There's a, something somewhere they ran. You're it ruining up. Christmas. Jimmy, Jimmy Palumbo is our walked. sports guy. He knows this. By how the way, Jimmy, how'd the callback Jimmy go? Palumbo is... <laughs> he had a callback today. Jimmy Palumbo was je- has confirmed that he's in Taken 3 with Liam Yes. yes. <laughs> with, are you really with Liam Neeson? Sarcasm drips. No. Well, it's good. It's a good deal. That, dude, it's fucking... You're going to get some checks for that. That's going to make a lot of scratch. Here's I one of my so. jokes. I was an extra in a radio commercial. <laughs> Good night. Nice. Thank you for coming. Nice. I That's like one of my that. old ones. Uh, nice. I, I like to. I like to, the early Prince of. I used to have L.A. Like the, jokes about how hard acting. Was. I liked it better when Mitch Hedberg told it in 1988. Yeah, sure. I guess you wrote that joke. Uh, you weren't. You weren't trying to have like a sports conversation with Joe Matteries. That's you? bad, isn't it? He doesn't really know. Joe's anything. one of those guys. You know, you got to talk to his brother. His my brother's, brother's insane. A real Eagles fan. Joe's but he knows a, all sports, my Joe's brother. half a fruit when it comes Just to ask him, does he know who Mark Belanger is? No. All right, we're moving forward. No. Was, uh, uh, first of all, no one <laughs> listening to the podcast knows who, who Mark is Belanger. it. I think, uh, this is why Jimmy's, uh, this is where the ratings skyrocket yeah, this down. Is where, I'm here to bring the show down. Mark Belanger was <laughs> one of the best fielding shortstops of all time. He played for the great Orioles teams in the 60s and early 70s. Oh, God, uh, how would I know that? I mean, a lot of He was also president of the American League. Do you know Manny Trio? Uh, of course. Uh, second baseman for the guy. He actually has the... What record does Manny Trio have? I'll give you a Manny Trio trivia. He might He might have uh, might have been broken by somebody else, but I think he still has this record. Hardest. 1982. Hardest on sidearm throw to Pete Harry Callis. Ca- Harry Callis uh, sitting in on the Artie Quitter podcast. <laughs> Let, let's Great do, let's do Har- Harry Callis talking to Bill Maher. Yeah, Harry, I guess you're a good announcer. I was one of the best Philadelphia history. You're horrible. <laughs> I'm you dead. Pro- you probably believe in God. <laughs> I'm not alive anymore. Uh, no, Manny Trio. You don't know this either, Jim? Uh, what's his What's know. his record? He holds a record for most games in a row by a second baseman without an error. Uh-huh. Does he really? Without making an error. And I believe he set that in the year of our Lord, 1982. That's... You know what You know what record I saw at an L.A. Dodger game? Tatis. Moving pictures by Rush? Hit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, that's the five he home hit, runs. No, or he hit he hit two grand two grand slams in one inning in the same inning in the yeah. same inning off. Here's the catch off the same pitcher. So the pitcher they left first of in. all eight RBIs third in run because <laughs> in between Chan Ho Chan Ho Park in, in between him he probably gave up a lot of runs. Here's the crazy thing in between thing. those two he probably gave up twelve runs. Mark McGuire that year hit like 110 home runs. Mark McGuire got up twice in that inning and struck out. <laughs> Did he? Like literally, and then this guy hits. And when he got up, the that's second, a Reggie or Mantle. The thing manager classic, fall asleep or something? Is he wish, taking a nap? I wish Artie was there because the guy behind me, uh, I'm sitting there and I'm, he gets up for the second time. And was I'm, it the guy behind me who yelled out, "Come on, Gina, do it for Ron Kong"? Come on. <laughs> well, I'm like you know four <laughs> beers deep, and I'm like, 
I'm like, hey, this, this guy's getting four up. bears deep. He, he just hit a grand slam. He's up for the second time. You know, this would be wild if he hits one. I said, it's got to be a record. Say, wait, is this? Were you at the game? I was at the game. Guy behind me goes, no, dude, McGuire did it last year. I said. No one's got no one's ever hit two grand slams. And next thing you know, inning. next Dude, this pitch. should be a bit. You should do this bit. It needs an ending in the middle, but <laughs> <laughs> no. But it, I saw it happen there. You know, no. That you were at that. I game. I saved the ticket stuff. Was that in L. A. Yeah. Oh, and with yeah. the Cardinals. Yeah, LA it was Card- the guy uh, Chan Chan Chan, Chan, Chan Park. Park was pitching for the Dodgers. Yeah, What's his smoked. first name? Tatis What's was Tatis? a Cardinal. Fernando yes. Tatis. Fernando yeah. Tatis coming up for the second time. What the hell? Monroe Guy hit a grand slam. He's up again with the bases loaded. What are the odds <laughs> of this coming through? Here's a guy. I'll t- hey. <laughs> hey, Tatis is up again. This guy had a grand slam last time. <laughs> Steve, what's going on here? I only did. I mean, he just hit another grand slam. <laughs> Who was the pitcher? It, is it, it can't be Chan. Chan Park. Yeah. I thought it was Chan I'll tell you, these Asian, these Asian Americans. Chan Park. If his name was Chan Let's do the two Park. Harry. The two Harry's announcing. Ready? Harry Callis. Harry politically correct. Harry Carey and Harry Callis announcing that. Hey, Harry, this is Tatis. He's up again. I can't believe he's up to play again, and they're not taking the pitcher out. I mean, is the what is the pitcher smoking angel dust? I don't know. I think the coach is on. He's on heroin in the dugout. Somebody's he fell on crack. <laughs> Tatis, first of all, you got Park to Tatis. You got an Asian to a Hispanic type. That's what the game's become. What happened to Cleeton Kenny Boyer? Let's hear if Jimmy Palumbo I remembers what pitch he hit it I out. Can only was do it a, I was can there a count when I he can hit only it do out? A bad Marv Albert. <laughs> uh, Tatis do, getting involved here. Do your here. John Sterling. <laughs> do your John I was going to Jim Gordon alongside Dick Lynch. Looking, Tatis, looking, Grand Slam's got it. Jim Gordon's got it. <laughs> Jim Gordon's my oh, bit, my I, favorite I, I bit. Know. Well, we, we, I first Not met Jim, Artie. Jim Gordon. That's all we did was. My we, stand-up bit. We would be in the car talking for an hour's drive, both of us doing Jim Gordon to each other. Yeah. People thought we were creepy. No, that, 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 uh, Artie turned it into millions of dollars, and I'm I'm in Hoboken in a, in a living room. Him, uh, <laughs> it's my living room. <laughs> this is a, this is a making, nice living room. Him making mistakes while well, you had a bet on the game, though. That's not even a bit. That was God's honest truth. Like, he announced games on the radio, and he made mistakes. So you, uh, Sims drops back, looking for a receiver. He's going way deep, long, long, way down for Baker, baby. Touchdown, Giants! He, no, he dropped it. <laughs> him, Jim, wait a minute. I mean, the timing. He talks right over the fucking punchline. You're like a drunk at helium. Well, he's not a stand-up as much as we are. He, yeah, but is, he's got he does a, do oh, stand-up. I didn't really, the great Joe Mattery. does do so stand-up, we, though. All right. He's a comic. You know what's funny? Stand-up comic. I, I hate when right. I... When, well, you, ever do, you ever do phone-ins on the radio, and they're like, they ask you to do... <laughs> this a why thousand I, times. I just did one in Philly. The guy goes, give me one of your best bits, which is like the worst thing that on the radio. That's so terrible. I start a bit about the Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys because it was a sports talk. The guy starts to take out, you know, fade out the commercial in the middle of the bit. I go, dude, you don't. Add, you, I, I'm I'm gonna yell at you now. You can't cut off a comedian's bit. That you is that know. is horrible. You asked for one and then you cut me off. They, but those guys, a lot of those DJs are so arrogant and they hate comics because they're jealous. They want to be a comedian and they want to make fun of you. Hey, how's the career going? I guess uh, you know, it's half sold out over there at Yuck Yucks. Like, shut the fuck up. Especially shut on up, sp- you asshole. On sports talk, yeah, it's a little guys, hard. You know, sometimes I mean, you guys are at a different level stand up wise than I am, but you guys forget hanging out with a bunch of arrogant, successful stand up comics. There's nothing. I've never done It's that. the worst two hours of your life because it's all like yeah no well, well, the most, it's name, like oh, shut the fuck about? up what are you talking about a lot of people walk around they think they and you find out they you do still? have nothing going on but an hour set it's uh, a, how many up. times have you told me you think Ray Romano's a load let's be honest <laughs> no I just, uh, here's another guy who are you talking about what arrogant yeah, stand up are you talking about na- I'm talking about you know the, the, the nameless headliners and they're acting like they have the they got the but how often have you done that enough times where you're like I gotta get out of this bullshit on this no you've hung out with a bunch of arrogant headline stand up comics they act a little bit like look Where? at me. I do Where have stand you hung up out with them? At, at the shitty venues that I do. But at they're the all Ramsey, headliners. The Ramsey I'm not Starbucks. That's a, that's a dick Dude, move. first of all, the only, my cousins are listening. That's it. Second care. of all, uh, 
is your cousin. <laughs> my cousins don't want to pay. Second of all, <laughs> they're sharing uh, the password. What, what did you name names? This is the podcast. I'm naming that. names. Uh, I talked about a racist p- sketch. Yeah, give us the name. Goodwill Smith. Because I, like, I think comedians that are at a high level usually are the opposite. They're very insecure and they don't usually brag. It's not usually some, the no. shitty comedians that act like they're at a higher level. That's what you're talking about. You're, you're talking about shitty comics. That's why you get pissed off. Well, the really good comics, like Dave Attell, if you talk to him, you'd think he was the unfunniest person on the planet. It, They're very self-deprecating. Norm always thinks he bombs. Right. Joe is very self-deprecating. You, you talk to these shitty comics, they have this wall up where like they could just bomb for 20 minutes at the strip or something, and they go, the comic strip. Yeah, I did. That's like saying curb. But the comic strip, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And 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 you you think they were just George Carlin at Carnegie Hall? I mean, well, it's crazy. When I was on the set, Jimmy, your thoughts? Was I, I was on the set of T three? Does that mean Taken three? I don't know. <laughs> what was T3? it? T two? What was it? Terminator two? You hated someone used to do that. T two, of course. <laughs> what is this? And the next, when I talk about oh, I did, uh, this is the great uh, Chicago Dan Vellato, the great producer. Record holders for consecutive games played without an error at each position. <laughs> He's not even on the list, Trio. I guess I fucked up. <laughs> he just made that up. No, catcher, sec- second baseman's Placido. Pl- no, okay. It was broken in 2008. Oh, he got it broken. Uh, he must have. He, but look, he didn't make an error for two seasons, three uh, seasons. A lot's happened to you since 2008. You know? <laughs> I, I can see how you can misfire on a statistic. 19, dude, it's an old 1982 record. is when Trio did it. <laughs> the shit that's happened to me since 1982. Uh, no, <laughs> your, but, your Yankee ability ended when Nettles retired. Placido you know. Polanco. We didn't make an error for four years. That's great. That's 186 games. Who else? Jeff Cirillo at third base, 99 straight games. Uh, tied with him, John Wainer, uh, 99 straight games. Mike Bordick at uh, shortstop. I remember. Bordick. I see Jimmy Rollins here. Yeah. You know what? You know what? Like, you know, oh, this I is don't think else. errors should count. What are you count. just handing me Jimmy Rollins for? I don't think errors should count, like in the outfield. Like I mean, like if you, Dude, who cares that Tory Hunter? The guy drops a fly. No, ball. I'm just saying, like it's stupid. It, the infield is what you really want. You want a guy to catch a ball and throw the guy yeah, out. Can I just read lazy this? flies? What you just center. said makes no sense. No, you, uh, I'm, I'm going to give. Dude, Tory, you're going to put Tory you're not Hunter, count errors in the outfield. No, I didn't mean count them, but like you're going to put Tory Hunter's uh, Tory Hunter's a uh, uh, streak uh, with Manny Trios or any of these other guys. No one's Come doing on. that. He just pulled the stats. These are facts. No one's arguing with you. Read the transcripts of the trial. I have to read Jimmy <laughs> Rollins's. Uh, his, did you just skip over shortstop? No, dude. I, I don't have the same piece of paper. I uh, have this one. I was looking at this place. one. Oh, okay. Shortstop, I have Mike Bordick at shortstop. I have to read this as Harry Callis. Hold on, hold on. Oh, that's good. Shortstop, G- Jimmy Rollins says here, Rollins is noted for his range <laughs> of shortstops, which makes ability to avoid defensive miscues even more impressive. The three-time gold glove player a franchise record 86 straight games 84 starts without an error from may 31st to september Joe, 9th. there's a lot of things you have to do reading that as harry callis was not one of them <laughs> that was fun i no, felt like man, i was listen. on uh, the mlb network yeah, we shot Root, they like shot this. roots in last time to get I, that pitched, I pitched the sketch i pitched <laughs> i pitched the sketch at mad tv goodwill smith instead of goodwill <laughs> Where uh, he's at, he's a janitor at a high school, Will Smith, and uh, the the problem is two plus two on the board. It took our professors four years to figure out this. Right. <laughs> Not getting much. Foghorn Lake, we're was such needy the comics. Time, the there's like a I new come, guys here. I got to no, do it. Anybody? Next time, next you time order? I come here, I'm bringing. I went on an audition with Artie in probably 1992. Artie probably knows the exact day. This is an example of a story. There's no reason to have the mics on. <laughs> <laughs> No, go but ahead. I, no, Artie made Artie, Artie wrote some what we thought were brilliant jokes, and I still think they're funny. Wait, um, wait, you talking about the, the uh, jerks from Jersey guys? No, no, the one we went into that audition, where we had to do the play on the names, the Schwarzenegger movies, and oh, yeah. remember we went in with I wrote a lot belt, of bad we did construction pun. guy. It, I, a couple of those jokes I, I liked. We were like, you talking about? I uh, laughed out loud about a month ago. I read them; they're funny as hell to me. I can't. Well, one was like, uh, I can't, I can't go over the George Washington Bridge. I'm afraid of big bridges. I have an aunt with a similar problem. She's afraid of Lloyd Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> what were you supposed we, to be? We were two jerks. From, I still <laughs> two well, jerks. One was how about that? He goes, your deals always suck. What about that time I got us free parking for a whole month at Yankee Stadium? Yeah, the month of February. <laughs> Those were pretty good. Sinatra, remember You're Sinatra, like a comedy team. Sinatra tickets for Tina Sinatra. <laughs> Tina. I said, how about the time I got a Sinatra ticket? Two hundred bucks a pop. Yeah, who wouldn't pay that to see Tina Sinatra? <laughs> and we went into this room with our 
a tool belts on. We were like a construction hats on. And the lady you know, It's a famous bit. You saw this. It was right. It was a great time for comedy. It was that. It was Upright Citizens Brigade. <laughs> well, that's when, that's when Joe didn't really talk to us because he was with. I didn't know comics. you guys then. Joe well, you got were like, knocked down a few. But Joe was a very arrogant young man. Oh, yes, you were. Yes, bit. you were. With You're the black leather jacket and yeah. stand up New York. You, you remember the leather you were, jack? You were yeah. knee deep in pussy. Yeah. That was a good jack. You strolled in acting like you averaged 25 points a game. You ran into Audie Lang. He held you no, to six. No, first of all, Jimmy is. You're the one he's talking about. No, 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 no. <laughs> you're the one. No, 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 no. You, uh, you uh, had uh, Joe no, you That was so passive aggressive. You had no, Joe no, in no, mind. No. What about those asshole comics? No, 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 no. We you had a 28 year old Joe Matarese. Me and Joe discussed this. In the beginning, we didn't know each other. So you thought, you, you probably thought we were two assholes. And we thought you doesn't remember arrogant. me. I met does. you guys playing softball because I would play your team at the in, in, the, in, the, in the in the Monday Broadway, Broadway show, 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 which that that deserves its own show. Were you guys on the same team? Yeah, we were. Which those team were, were you on? fun. Well, we played for an actual Broadway play. We were ringers. We, we they we, brought you in the sisters. Yeah. Tony Rosenzweig. Roberts pitching. What team? The sisters Rosen. Yeah, we were pretty good. Pretty Dan good. Landon. If Jimmy would shut up, I'll tell you the name of the team. The <laughs> sisters Rosenzweig was the name of the play. Okay. The biggest chick play ever. Me and Jimmy were ringers. But it was so much fun. Th we played Mondays and Thursday mornings at 11.30. Did you play first? Oops. No, I played short, short and third. Okay, but, I played but, but third. I was too, thinner. Right? There were hot chicks in the league. And homeless guys would come around. They would buy Heinekens for two bucks and sell them for $4. I don't know how they <laughs> invented a, a, a cardboard box. They were the coldest beers I've <laughs> ever seen. true. But two, you'd sw swig to an end. You got a buzz going. The, the best, oh, I love it. The best part about it was Artie and I, we were like, ah, oh, $4 beers. And they're like 24 ounce buzz. Doing key hits of but, blow behind but, the carousel. Yeah, but the problem was the rest of the team was like. <laughs> the carousel's there. The rest yeah. of the team tried to tell. <laughs> so the guys, hey, Art, hey, Art and Jimmy, uh, try not to have beers till maybe like the seventh inning. Like, oh, but we, would be, we would be half in a bag. Really? Like, yeah. yeah. No, no one these, I ever play with These would fruits do that. were dead sober. They're for five, I'm like, dude, I'm three for four with two doubles, <laughs> and I'm wasted. <laughs> so great, you got it because because the fucking third baseman was you know a dance instructor. You know, you're roping it down his fucking well, face. See, I played at the two o'clock league, and I think you played Monday. in that too. We played in that. I played. Were you on a comic strip? First, the for comic strip for many years. Then Lucian, Lucian passed Lucian away. Lucian before his fingers. Fell yeah, but his fingers started falling off towards the end of Lucian the, this, when he ran, was playing. Ran the comic strip. Uh, Real arrogant guy. I don't want to speak ill of that, but very arrogant guy. But he judged comedians about whether or not you could go up at the comic strip, which is an important club. He died of lupus. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. Well, Florentine. His fingers fell off. Jim literally. Florentine and I were Jersey guys with this other comic, Eric McMahon. Florentine. <laughs> and we would meet on the Jersey Turnpike to go play on Lucian's team. We, I, and I lived in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. This is a two-hour commute to just play softball. I did it because he would give you spots if it's you. Not had, worse than it, a two-hour story. If you went two for four, you'd get no, fucking great. three spots the next day. Oh, 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 oh yeah, really? Is yeah. That true? So <laughs> Florentine and I were really good softball players. So we go. Jimmy was a great player. Lefty. Well, he put a uh, throw, throw left, hit left. First well, of all, do you remember the first day? The we gotta, we gotta, we league. gotta take a break. Wait one second. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I just want to talk about Jim, Artie giving Mary Steenburgen a hug, which just, is uh, the actress uh, Mary Steenburgen. I hugged her drunk. She came. I up hugged to her Artie. a little too long. In softball? The, wait a minute. Yeah. She came up to Artie and said, "Artie, I love the play." Didn't say Artie though. She said, "I love the play." Gave him a hug. I'm thinking, does she think Artie's in Sister Rosenzweig? I mean, <laughs> how off can you be? All right, we have to. Uh, <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? Are you saying I couldn't be that? All right, we got to take a break. When we come back, uh, is Brian Jones going to join us? Yes. Brian Jones, uh, who's a black guy, is going to join us uh, when we come back. Uh, he knows about football. Played in the NFL for five years. He's a friend of mine, friend of the show. Good man. We appreciate it. He's our, officially our first guest. Uh, so, uh, Artie Quitter Podcast. We're having a blast here. Jimmy Palumbo, Matt Arise, flipping behind the, uh, the glass, and uh, the great Dan Filato. Brian Jones talking football when we return. Hey, welcome back to the Artie Quitter Podcast. We're hoping Brian Jones calls. <laughs> or we call him and he's there. Uh, so far, not good. But uh, yeah, we can't get the big guests. A lot of these big A-listers, they blow you off. 
<laughs> Brian Jones, who's on, I believe, from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. on CBS Sports. <laughs> Not able to get him on the podcast. Uh, Joe Matarese has got some plugs. Let's get to some uh, some plugs for Joe's career. All right. I, only, I have to do these quick plugs because, you know, as you know, if you've been listening since uh, day one of the already – Quitter podcast. My son gets off the bus at three forty-five. God, no, <laughs> nobody cares about that. No one cares. So no, I got a plug in the middle. No one of the knows show. why. Well, that's all right. That's why I'm doing it. Just well, it's it. only eight degrees out, so he yeah. can stay there for a little bit yeah. if you're late. I left the front door open, dude. That's like I trust my neighborhood, but I leave it what's open. That, what's Hope that he's ex- smart enough to push it open. What's that expression? The, just give me the baby. Don't give me the. I don't want to hear you're pregnant. Just give me the baby. <laughs> I never heard that one. <laughs> I think that's my whole life. I'm paraphrasing. I'm it. that guy that always fucking what talks What is that too term? Much. It's like, I don't want to hear you pregnant. Just give me the baby. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Joe. Joe's plug. So I'll be at the Bust a Gut Comedy Club in Toms River, New Jersey. Janu- First of all, Bust a Gut in Toms River. Isn't that great? That is great. The January 23rd and 24th. Okay. Come out. Go to JoeMatterese.com if you want uh, more info about me. Follow me on Twitter at the Joe Matterese and listen to my podcast. It goes up every Thursday called Fixing Joe, where I bring celebs in to try to fix whatever my issue is. Of I've the been week. on it plenty of times. Great podcast. Yes. So that's it. That's my plug. Uh, what have you found that since uh, you know websites have come into play as a comic, you can consolidate the plugs. Like, like, do you feel like maybe if you just say the website, it's enough, or you, you still have to? Get I it? always wonder that. It's yeah. a good question because it's all up on the because website. Because when you do a talk show like the, the Night Show or something, they don't want to hear five million plugs. No. And even Howard got like that at the end. And I and I respected Howard for that. You can't want to, somebody like Levy would come on with four thousand plugs. It would take an hour. You know, if you have a podcast, I mean, if you have a website, you just get to it. So that's okay. it. Joe Matteris. Joe Matteris. Com. Com. And right. I just you got it. It's all there. Brian Jones is on the phone. My old buddy Brian Jones. I, I thank him so much much for for calling in brian you there i'm here baby how are you Artie? how you Jeez, doing man that's better than us yeah no brian jones is a great broadcaster was a great football player and uh university of texas and Hook uh, horns. yeah absolutely man and uh has uh has fought racism his entire life is that true <laughs> <laughs> now brian i wanted to i pitched this uh sketch when i was at mad tv i've been telling the guys the guys feel it's racist i don't think they have a sense of humor would you think as an african-american this is a racist sketch you know the movie goodwill hunting yes i pitched a sketch called goodwill smith where will smith is a janitor at high school and the problem on the board is two plus two <laughs> <laughs> And, and and the professor uh, talks like Amos and Andy's guy. Like, it took our professors four years to figure out this one. <laughs> What's two plus two? Forty-four. It is. <laughs> See already. You could have played him. Head, head of state. <laughs> <laughs> See, Brian has a sense of humor. I thought of a more racist joke. You could have him just work at a Goodwill. Like Goodwill. <laughs> Goodwill. <laughs> That's Smith. He's killing with Brian. He works at the Goodwill. <laughs> Listen, if we hey, rip, hey, listen. Hey, we don't, we don't, we don't deal in wheels. We don't need nothing for our folks. <laughs> listen, you, we're talking to two guineas from Jersey. We'll make it way more racist if we talk about <laughs> talk about it enough. We'll get this in a, it'll be a clan meeting pretty soon. But <laughs> no, 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 no clans invited. Brian, just so you know, you're talking to Joe Matarese, who's from South Jersey, big Eagle fan, great comedian, and Jimmy Palumbo, my other buddy from North Jersey, great actor, comic, and big sports fan. So they're with me here. Um, so he's an Eagles fan. Go Cowboys! Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Listen, can we? I know you're more of a college guy. Can we? Can we concentrate on the pros? Do you mind that? Yeah, come on. All right, my lock of the week. Tell me if you think again. I fell off the gambling wagon. If uh, maybe if you watch Entertainment Tonight, you, you saw this. It was uh, in the <laughs> in the birthdays. Uh, no, I I feel now a lot of people like Green Bay given six. At Lambeau to to Dallas. That, look, you got to score seventy points to beat them at Lambeau. For some reason, I like Seattle giving eleven to Carolina better. I don't feel Carolina belongs in the playoffs. It's a fluke under five hundred. I think Seattle is going to make a statement. They're rested, and that's the lock. Which game do you like better with the spread? Well, your, your you, you know what? Uh, I, I think I agree with you. And although Carolina has a hell of a defense with Keekley and Davis, yeah. they play outstanding. That front four uh, can really get out the quarterbacks. Uh, but I love the way that uh, uh, you know.
Russell Wilson can extend play. So he, he won't be a Ryan Lindley who couldn't do a damn thing. Right. Only threw for like 52 yards. So Russell Wilson extending plays, making life miserable for that front seven of Carolina. I, I like that 11, man. I'm with you there. Well, listen, I, I, I really think they're going to win by make a statement and win by like 30 points easy. I'm not fully sold on Cam Newton. But you bring up a great point in Russell Wilson. Uh, he's doing what I think they thought RG3 was going to do in the pros, right. running that style of quarterback. Do you think – and he's clearly doing it in an excellent way, but do you think that style of quarterback has longevity? Well, what Russell Wilson does, while he's uh, extending plays and he being elusive, he still has his eyes downfield. Right. He'll still take off and run. We've seen Andrew Luck do that uh, last week versus uh, Cincinnati. Everyone's covered, big hole in the middle of the field. Yeah. He exploits that. But yet, those guys still have their eyes downfield. They're not taking big shots. Russell Wilson knows how to get out of bounds, knows how to slide, whereas RG3 did. And Russell Wilson has a better grasp of his offense than did RG3 uh, of his. And, and Russell Wilson is very adept at, at uh, identifying coverages, checking out of things. And that's where you make your hay in the league. And you've got to have that anticipation as well. You know, we're talking about uh, uh, Jameis Winston declaring today he's going to enter the draft and right. Winston or Mariota. Who do you want? I'm taking Winston all day long. He looks the part of a pro. He can make all the throws of a pro. Of course, it's a different animal once you get to that level. Uh, but I, I think uh, from an anticipation standpoint, Winston is the better pick. Well, that's a good point. You, you, I'm glad you brought up the Winston uh, Mariota thing. A lot of people, I think, would disagree with you. I respect that yeah. opinion. Uh, it's a, a little controversial because because a lot of people think Winston might be a bit of a head case, blah, 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 right. and a college right. player, not a pro player. But you're, you're, it's a no-brainer for you. Huh? Winston is your pick. It, 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 it is a no-brainer. Even in that ass-whipping they took from Oregon in the Rose Bowl, yeah. the guy was dynamite. I thought he was fantastic. And I sent out a tweet sitting there watching that before it really got out of hand and said, hey, don't get this misconstrued. I'm not condoning one iota the things he's been accused of doing, the things he has done. But from a purely football standpoint, He's your guy. He's right. playing in a pro-style offense. He's more athletic than uh, he tends to showcase. He can make all the throws. He can anticipate. He can fit the ball in tight windows. That's the key, whereas Mariota, who's an outstanding quarterback, he's been a great quarterback, Oregon's first Heisman Trophy winner, he was throwing the guys that were wide open. Right. I need to see him thread the needle, man. I need to see him anticipate, throw guys open. And that's not a knock on him. I mean, I just haven't seen it. That's what I need to see, especially at the next level. From a standpoint, though, of comedy, you could work Iota into Mariota, if you, if you, <laughs> as far as tweets are concerned. So, uh, real quick, my last question before I let a couple of the other guys uh, get into it here. If you had one quarterback to pick to build a team around in the NFL, uh, to me it's Aaron Rodgers. Wilson's up there, but who, would you, who do you take yeah Aaron is there my, my top one you know one a one b and then Tom Brady and it's really a beauty contest guys yeah. that's not a snub of anyone else I love Russell Wilson I thought coming out of college he was going to be dynamite and I was right everyone was pointing to his height you know he doesn't have all the metrics the total uh, prototypical size how was that the guy commanded offense at NC State he transfers to Wisconsin immediately wins that locker room over his name captain leads them to a Big Ten championship they go to the Rose Bowl, they, they lose, but the guy had everything you wanted from the qualities of, of leadership and, and, and uh, a, a smart football player. Uh, so he had that football IQ. Uh, but I would say Rodgers and Brady, those would be my top, my top two. And, and once again, it's a beauty contest. I just love their style, the well, way they go go about it. Well, if it's a beauty contest, Tom Brady all the way, I would fuck the shit out of him. And I'm, I'm, as, <laughs> I'm as heterosexual as they come, but he, he, looks like, he looks like he could be the lead singer of One Direction, Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, go ahead. I'm going to let you have that one. I know. I know in the black community, hey, that's very, very – you're down. Yeah, we're just going to let that one breathe. With Italians, <laughs> Italians is the same thing. But uh, here's Jimmy Palumbo. Hey, I want to ask you something. Hey, Brian, you're talking about quarterbacks, but, you know, you got uh, Mariota kind of a – in a, in a unique system at Oregon, a very bad team to play when you don't play them all the time. And you just mentioned Brady, who really didn't do that much in college. He's one of your big, strong uh, uh, pocket passers. Hot. And, 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 and he ended up, he did nothing in college, let's face it. For, you know, and he he came was in the, number 190 pick, uh, right? Something like well, that. And then you got guys that, that are, are your, your more rollout quarterbacks that have movement. What's the difference between, like, how do you judge a guy who has a little movement but can stay in the pocket? Because that, to me, is where, like, like Geno Smith was a dominant college football player. I watched that guy play. He was awesome. He gets to the pros, and all of a sudden it, it doesn't all come together. You know what I'm saying? 
Well, I, I, I uh, beg to differ with you on, on Tom. He was a good quarterback in college. I mean, were they uh, winning national titles? No, but he was still a damn good quarterback. Everyone just thought he was too puny, too skinny. Michigan, and fragile, right? Much like they thought of, uh, of Teddy Bridgewater. Look at the year he had. I think yeah. he had 14 touchdowns. Yeah, he had the 12 picks. You expect that from a rookie, but he threw for almost 3,000 yards and didn't even start the season yeah, uh, as, as a starter. So well, Brady didn't light it up like some of the quarterbacks at Winston right. and these guys well, were talking the, about. The, well, the key, once again, is, one, you got to get into that playbook, man. Uh, when you get the, uh, the the pros, everyone's fast. Everyone's athletic. How do you set yourself apart? Well, it's by your football IQ. It, it's by you – Putting the work in, the extra work in. It's also by, uh, from a quarterback standpoint, you got to be able to anticipate and throw guys open. You got to elevate the play of others, and that's what Tom Brady has brought to the table. He's a guy that can elevate the play of others. I mean, he's never really had those marquee guys around him. Uh, he had uh, uh, Moss, uh, Randy Moss, at one time. You know, and you look at Gronk now. Yeah, he's a big superstar. Aaron Hernandez before he went all crazy and started. <laughs> Before you know, he, uh, well, there's a, uh, it's also a uh, there's the head coach of land, might have a allegedly. Loop, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I know. Yeah, well, I mean, listen, Jimmy the Greek and several scientists have pointed this out. I'm curious, you're the would, in the pros. Would you rather have the extra bone in your ankle like the blacks or the bigger white brain? <laughs> <laughs> you are nuts. <laughs> Neither one of those is true, of course. Jimmy that, the Greek that, with that, Jimmy that, the Greek with a few that, cocktails. Is, is that why my ankles hurt all the time? Yeah. <laughs> no, listen, uh, I I, uh, I thought that was just that gout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah. Uh, listen, uh, no, I, I agree. I, I think you're uh, underrating Brady a little bit uh, as well in, in in college. I remember him not being yeah. so god awful. You know, but, he wasn't. Uh, he didn't do. He didn't start. I don't think to the last five games. But a lot, you know, Winston. The the Winston Mariota thing. Is uh, is an interesting argument, and I was, you know, you know, uh, Brian. That's why you're a good guest. You, you you go the other way there. A lot of people are down on Winston. What do you think of Bortles? Well, well yeah, they're, they're down on him because of all the off the field stuff. You got all these water walkers who you know who want to castigate the young man. He made some stupid mistakes. You know the uh, the other deal, the uh, allegations which have never gone to court or anything. They just investigated again with a Supreme Cut former. Supreme Court judge there uh, in, in, in uh, Florida State, and people would say, "Well, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it was uh, the, it, it wasn't a legitimate uh, a proceeding." Well, okay, whatever. Yeah, and once you, you know, especially these college football, and once they have their tentacles out, they want to get you. They want oh, to draw yeah. blood. And they Absolutely. Been able to do that. So you're I'm, right. Once again, I'm not condoning any of the mistakes the guy made. Hell, I'm just glad they didn't have all his Twitter and cell phones around. When I was doing my dirt <laughs> way back in the day, yeah. no, you're, so right. you. you're so yeah. right. You're so right. I they... wouldn't be talking to you right now. So, I, I, as far as Bortles, I think he's going to be a, a damn good quarterback. He's got the arm and everything you want uh, from a leadership standpoint. I think he's going to be fine. When so, you're so right, man. When somebody fucks up, uh, says something wrong, or that could be uh, considered offensive, or gets involved with the law, these these whatever you want to call it, politically correct people, they come out of the woodwork and they don't stop till they take something from you. They yeah. Yeah. They want your and, livelihood. And, and, and you're just, it's alleged. Nothing's been proven yet, but all you have to be is alleged. Right. Damn, right. you're guilty. It, it's not innocent to proven guilty. It's guilty to proven innocent. Right. How do you think, uh, college-wise, how do you think this new system is working out? Do you like it? Well, I thought it was ludicrous how they arrived at the four teams. I have no problem with the four playoff teams. Now down to two, of course. I have no problem with that. Uh, but the way they arrived at it and the rationale they used to boot Baylor and, and, and TCU out of there it was just ludicrous. It really came down to brand identity. You had teams with cachet, Ohio State, who overtook Baylor or, and, and TCU. Now, if that's a Texas sitting there 11 and 1, or, Bay, or, or an Oklahoma sitting there 11 and 1 out of the Big 12, or right. TCU and Baylor were sitting, there's no way that occurs. So it was all about name recognition. Yeah. yeah, it's unbelievable. Though. You're right, Condoleezza Rice and the other some of the. I mean, Condoleezza Rice is a brilliant woman, but she's picking the teams. You know, yeah. some of the other idiots on that that panel. Yeah, but I think Ohio State got a bad rap there. I mean, as the as the the fourth team that didn't deserve it. I mean, they were down to their 11 string quarterback, and they still were able to you know go 11 and oh, one. No, no, no. I agree with you. I like the four. I, I thought that it was fine. Like right. I said, I, I just don't like the way they arrived at the four. The rationale they they utilized. 
which was bogus. I mean, just say, hey, Ohio State's got a history that Baylor and TCU don't have. Just come out and say, don't give me all that other bull dookie. Yeah, so you agree with the outcome, just not how they did it. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, uh, back to the pro. So what, what uh, prediction-wise, you like the Packers and you like Seattle. Uh, give us uh, some AFC thoughts. Well, New England, uh, they've had issues with the Ravens in the playoffs. And at home, uh, New England is one and two. Uh, right. In the past versus the Ravens, so uh, I think that's going to be a tough ball game. But I like New England winning the ball game. Uh, I just don't think the Patriots, uh, excuse me, the the Ravens are going to have enough, uh, especially defensively, to stop them. Uh, I, I, if they can run the rock, they may make it closer. But I don't, I don't see that that happening. Uh, I, I like New England. I, yeah, think New England's going to go to the ball. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. You know, you got Denver taking on on uh, the, the Colts. Colts don't have enough defense to stop uh, Denver, and Denver's been able to run the ball now. C.J. Anderson has brought them a lot of balance. Some concerns with Peyton Manning, whether or not that that arm uh, is bothering him uh, at the beginning of the weekend. Uh, but with a week off, a lot of rest, they should be okay. So I see Denver uh, heading to Foxborough and New England exacting some revenge on them from last year's playoff. But don't you think the uh, the Cowboys are a bad matchup for Green Bay? I mean, the Cowboys have an offense. In Lambeau, that's the big but deal. You know what? Yeah. The, the Giants have beaten there in, there in playoffs. Uh, I think that the Not Cowboys year, are a bad, yeah. a bad right. match. They got, you know, with the running game, the offensive line. Uh, one of the best wide receivers, one, I think the best, one of the best tight ends of all time. Um, you know, are, is Green Bay going to be able to, uh, you know, <laughs> is they going to be able to stop the Cowboys, especially if either one that, of them gets a lead? That's a big question, and, and hopefully they can generate that running. I think they only had 75 yards last week versus the league's second best uh, rush defense in Detroit. But I, uh, the Cowboys, I think, are going to have to outscore Green Bay because I don't believe their defense, there's no name defense that has just uh, played above their abilities all season long, I think they can get exposed in a, in a game like this. They were to a certain extent last week versus the Lions. They don't have a consistent pass rush. you got to put pressure on Aaron Rodgers if you're going to beat Green Bay. We know he, they're undefeated at home. We know the Cowboys are undefeated on the road as well. So uh, that's not going to scare them. But the fact that they just don't have that guy that can put consistent pressure on Aaron Rodgers, I don't think that bodes well for them. How many slaves working for a clothing company in the Philippines are knitting together sweaters that'll cover the baloney tits of Chris Christie when he goes to Lambeau in that freezing cold weather? Will they will they knit together five cashmere sweaters to cover this his traitor you, baloney you, you tits? Say, if you go to a damn Cowboys game, at least wear the team colors. Oh. The orange sweater. He's the what Jersey. He's the Jersey governor. He's fucking at a Cowboy game, high fiving Jerry Jones. <laughs> Fuck him and his baloney tits. And <laughs> there's not a jacket big enough to cover his. Cunt baloney tits and fucking Lambeau Field. Your thoughts? Hey, they're going to need him in that box in Lambeau. It's going to be cold. So he can keep him warm. <laughs> By the way, one what, bear what is, hug and everyone will be fine. What is the weather for Sunday? Cold. But not, is, yeah. is it rainy? Or, I mean, uh, snowy or is it just cold? It's just, I mean, it's you know, to me, it's land. I mean, I agree with you, Jim, about the matchup in Dallas, a different story. But don't you think, Brian Lambeau, they're going to have to score 70 points to beat him? A I very mean, average giant team went up there and beat him a yeah, couple but, of years Yeah, back. but dude, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the Colts also beat the, the Giants with Johnny Unitas in 1959. What were <laughs> I just think the Cowboys, as much as I hate the Cowboys, I think everybody's like, ah, they're not that good. Wow, wow. Watch your mouth He's now. a Cowboy guy. I know. Well, yeah, 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 but Please. listen, uh, would, you, would, Who would, is you president? Be, would you be afraid to be in the booth uh, with the baloney tits Christie as he ate all the food? Don't you think? He, <laughs> there's nothing in the buffet. Play. You make sure you get there early. You don't have to tell him. You don't have to tell him come and get it twice. You know you're a fat guy, Brian. If I'm making fat jokes about you, <laughs> I just hate that. The Mercedes Benz National Headquarters leaves New Jersey yesterday, and and uh, Christie's out in Dallas, farting around with Jerry Jones. He's a bum. <laughs> well, so I saw that. they're they're heading down south. Mercedes going to Atlanta. Benz, and we're out of here. Let me tell you something. He, and I'll tell you what, Christie is clearly. Clearly, a Jersey Gindaloon who has got a lot of fucking controversy in his bag with scandals. Uh, calling attention to yourself, not a good idea. Like like these backward, backdoor deals that are going on. I think uh, him and Jerry Jones might have done something that uh, they're going to get in trouble for. 
Maybe he's, maybe he's trying to uh, 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 associate himself with Jerry so he can get in the oil business, get out of the politics. That's what it sounds like. You want money. Nothing but money and oil, man. It just keeps coming out of the fucking ground. So, uh, Texas go, black yeah. tea. You're right. You're right, Texas tea. So, mo- so, Monday, so Monday, you like Oregon? Uh, no, I like Ohio State Monday. I- I'm going with Ohio State. Uh, I thought they had enough offense and, and firepower from a speech, a speech standpoint to knock off uh, Bama, I still thought Bama would win, but I thought they had enough to put pressure on their one Achilles heel, which is the back end, that secondary for Bama, and they did just that. I think didn't expect Cardell Jones to play as well as he did. I like Ohio State in this ball game. It's going to be a track meet. Both have a ton of athletes. I think the slippers are coming Ohio off State. Ohio State. I think that quarterback uh, is going to have just an average game for Ohio State. I'm a Big Ten fan because I'm a Rutgers fan, God forbid. But uh, I just think uh, the, that machine in green there, man, they're just going to start scoring too many points, and Ohio State's not going to be able to handle it. That's what We'll I think. see. I think Ohio State can match them. I think they can with their speed. I think they can match them point for point. Now, sure. you know who Britt, Britt McHenry is, the ESPN reporter? Yes. With, with, a, with enough booze in her, do you think you could fuck her at a party? <laughs> <laughs> I think you with enough, I think with enough booze I could fuck her. You are on one today. <laughs> you are terrible. She might be the hottest chick I've ever seen, and she's marrying Thor, the guy who played Thor. Come on, bro, you're a ladies man. You got to tap that before she gets married. <laughs> Wreck that marriage. Wreck that marriage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, tell her, forget Thor. How about the Brown Hornet? <laughs> yeah, you know what? Have, the, have a kid with her. That kid would win the mulatto. <laughs> <laughs> the Brown Hornet. The, the, she is, do the, you the, 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 ever met her? She's smoking. Yes. I've seen her on television already. Yeah, no, she's hot. You don't want her to start hitting threes on She's you. hot. By the way, so you got you got a new job I hear? Congrats and order or what? Yeah, morning drive. Gio and Jones, uh, Greg Giannotti came in from Pittsburgh. Uh, it was a longtime employee here at the fan. Then he went to Pittsburgh and, and hosted a morning drive show there. So they partnered with uh, me with him. Uh, six to nine, CBS Sports Radio Network, Gio and Jones. Great. Well, listen, man, uh, you're officially our first guest. It's our third day. And I couldn't think of a better one. Bri, you are funny. You got a great sense of humor. You know your shit. So thank you. Please come on in, you know, anytime. And if you you need uh, you need me in there, I'd love to come and hang. You got it, buddy. Appreciate you, Artie. Yeah, Bri, uh, great job. That's the great Brian Jones. And uh, I'm with Jimmy Palumbo. Joe Matarese had to go pick up his kid. Uh, <laughs> we're going to come back. Uh, a couple more little things when we come back, and we'll wrap up the Artie Quitter podcast on this blustery Wednesday. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Artie Quitter podcast. There is nothing more entertaining than watching Jim Palumbo eat a roast beef and cheddar cheese sandwich on an onion roll with a little oil and vinegar to dunk it in. That's what we did during the break. Uh, Some sandwiches from here in Hoboken. I'm a little disappointed you didn't go to, like, it's from King's. No, I know you're right. I told Dan that. He doesn't know. Dan's from Chicago. I figured he'd come to Artie Life podcast. Dan's one of those Midwestern Italians that he goes, oh, yeah, we got some brats, we got some... uh, I'll tell you what, we got some sausages, some Italian beef. When they say Italian beef, uh, they say Italian beef and sauces in, in, yeah. in the Chicago instead of sausage. I hate that. I thought it'd be nice, some nice provolone or prosciutto. We got Italian beef. It's an, One time I was in Chicago, there's an Italian beef festival. You're going to go to the Italian beef festival? You got to do that. Oh, what do they call them Red Hots, too? What are those? Red Hots? Red Hot Brats. Red Hot Brats. I'm looking at this chick I was talking to Brian Jones about, Britt McHenry. She's only the hottest thing on the fucking planet Earth, 23 years old, and she's a sideline reporter for ESPN. If you're that hot, you can't know that much about football. You just can't. You can't know about, like, you know, the way slobs like myself who've been gambling and losing money on shitty secondaries since I was 19 years old. A lot of money, too. Money I didn't fucking have. There's no way this broad knows what I know or is as passionate as I'm. Uh, but she, she looks like she's, a, she's an 11 and she's marrying the guy who played Thor, which really pisses you off. Jim, your thoughts? <laughs> yeah, they, how do they... Like, they're prepared for the event they cover, but they don't know. They don't know things. That's right. It's all preparation. And I hate preparation. If you got to prepare, <laughs> it means you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. 
Honestly, but she is smoking. Britt McHenry, look her up. I saw her the other day, and I was like, yeah, I tweeted, where the fuck do they find these broads? She like, does not run like a catcher. No. That. No. Nobody knows what you're talking about. <laughs> but, uh, no, it really, it's, uh, it's a little aggravating that, you know, these hot chicks are taking jobs away from ugly guys. Yeah. You know, ugly guys, they deserve this. Like, and when we grew up, everybody looked like Jimmy the Greek. The hottest thing on TV was Brian Gumbel talking about sport. Right. Uh, but uh, she's, of course, got. You know. She's no Irv Cross. <laughs> I loved Irv Cross. I, you know, it was weird though. I think it all changed when Joe Namath. What's the name of that chick? Joe Namath. He was drunk. That's still one of my oh, favorite God. clips. What was her name? Susie Colbert. Susie Colbert. Susie Colbert. Oh, God, that was so funny. I don't care if the team is struggling. I want to kiss you. The way he said struggling. I don't care if the team is struggling. So embarrassing. And he had to publicly and apologize and say, who's an alcoholic? Joe fucking name it, man. And Susie Colbert on a good day is a six, six and a half. That's what made it funnier. I mean, it's Joe Namath. In 1968, she would have been begging to blow him, begging to fucking suck his dick. And she's like, she's looks at him like he's a disgusting grandfather who has like you know gravy on his face. That's what she looked at, like. Oh, you're grossing me out. It's Joe Willie, man. This is Joe. I don't care if the team is struggling. I want to kiss you. Yeah, that was a, that was a low moment for. Uh, I think low low moment for Joe Namath for him. Of, cor- of course, low moments for the Jets. Jet fans. Hey, listen. How about? Uh, how about the fact that that's what happens to good-looking people? They eventually get their comeuppance. Uh, you know, especially if you're an athlete. If you can't play like the way he played with the Jets, if you're not good-looking anymore, eventually you got to add to the conversation. You can't be boring anymore. This happened to Demi Moore and Heather Locklear in recent years. They weren't hot anymore. They they hit their oh. they hit their mid forties, and people stopped right. thinking their <laughs> stories were funny. You know what I mean? Wait like I, uh, I did margin call it Demi Moore, and she. You do not want to play her in the first round. What's of the Margin playoffs. Call? It's another movie I did called Margin. How call. long ago though? Four you keep bringing up four years ago. Three a lot years happens. Ago? A lot happens in four it was, years. The I, wall no, could come no, and hit that chick no, before no. she even knows it. When four years time. When you're playing the the, the twelve thirty Thursday game against Demi Moore, you see me you're four, not happy with dude, that scene. You see me four years ago. I look like David Beckham. <laughs> a lot's happened. A lot's happened. I'm just saying, when when you, uh, and Heather Locklear started to go nuts. Again, for a 45-year-old, yeah, she's hot. I wouldn't, I would not fuck her. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that they're not 23 anymore. And you know what? That story about my makeup artist always got laughs. You're not laughing at it anymore. No, because we walk around you now like you're a shrub. Because nobody nobody thinks you're interesting because you I, you don't look good anymore. I think she's still hot enough to. to... Again, for us, Jim, I know, I, I point well taken, but they're not <laughs> yeah, but one I'm, of the hottest chicks on the planet anymore. Uh, uh, Michelle right. Pfeiffer's still hot. Come on, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer's old man. She's old. Take a look at her lately. You don't see her anymore. Give her time, she'll pick you apart. She looks like Mick Jagger. <laughs> Like almost simply is that all? That's being know. a little harsh. It doesn't look like Mick Jagger. All right, I'm gonna do a little she self promotion. Not, she, she's hot, man. I'm, telling I'm gonna do a little uh, self promotion here. Uh, guy reviewed my stand up special, Stench of Failure. The reason I'm bringing this up is it's on on demand. It might be on iTunes, but uh, he gave it three out of four stars, and I appreciate it. The guy gets it. Like sometimes uh, reviewers get it. The critics were kind to me on this one, which uh, is not a uh, <laughs> not a regular thing in my career. But uh, this uh, this guy figured it out. He's a guy uh, named Steve Pulaski. And uh, if you go to the Steve Pulaski uh, message board, you can Google him. Steve, spelled like Steve, Pulaski, P-U-L-A-S-K-I, as in the Pulaski Skyway, <laughs> if you're uh, from here in New York City. Artie Lang, The Stench of Failure, directed by Ryan Polito. Uh, Comedy Central did a great job with this special, and I appreciate it. So he gave it three out of four stars. And again, this guy, I think, kind of got it. And uh, check it out on On Demand. Download it on iTunes. Uh, I worked hard on this. It represents a few years of touring, and uh, I appreciate your thoughts. Uh, Artie Lang is one of the few comedians working today who has the ability to be wickedly insightful about his past run-ins with drug addiction and can turn around almost immediately and say the raunchiest, Filthiest thing one can think of at that moment. 
Lang has constantly found ways to shock and provoke, understandably so, with his unfiltered approach to comedy. And in the stench of failure, his latest Comedy Central sponsored special, he delivers more of the same debauchery and humor he has crafted over the years in film and on the Howard Stern Show. The word crafted might be a bit much. <laughs> He's being very kind there, crafted, that I crafted. Lang hits the ground running, talking early on about how his personal trainer... Uh, and him got in a small argument about the high you get from heroin being stronger than the high one gets from running, with the trainer speaking without personal experience on the former. Lang talks about uh, the bet. Uh, uh, Lang talks about he bet the trainer that he'd run three miles one day and the trainer would try heroin for the first time and they'd compare notes on the highs they received. Following that, Lang divulges into to a barrage of different ideas such as offering to break former Penn State football head coach Jerry Sandusky out of prison so he could have his way with pop singer Justin Bieber, along with offering his funniest bit of the special by discussing his time playing Scrabble in a mental asylum. I assure you it's punched up with jokes, but very true. Lang is a zealous performer, ribald and uh, limitless. Barrage, and, zealous, <laughs> zealous, crafted. What is it, a Burns documentary? He, even overly zealous. Uh, ribald. A ribald and limitless in what he wants to discuss. And even if his humor provokes occasional discomfort and wincing, one must one must admire the way he doesn't care what kind of controversy he stirs. This was proven by the blowback he received after making sexually explicit, racially charged comments on Twitter about ESPN first take sports uh, caster Carrie Champion, another hot chick uh, in sports, and how he refused to apologize for his comments unless champion said herself that she was indeed disgusted the stench of failure is a testament to lang's behavior and we can see a sort of cathartic release emerge from lang after he talks about his battles with heroin and prescription drugs this is a rewarding special mainly because it shows the release of one man through that most rampant uncontrollable drug of them all which is humor uh and again that was uh, really good, man. I, I appreciate it. Again, the three out of four star Steve Pulaski uh, wrote that review. Uh, and I appreciate it. I really do. So I wanted to thank him. And uh, I uh, made that money. I, I, on Twitter, I invited this guy to come on uh, to come on the show. Maybe talk. If he's got something to plug, not talk about this review. We'll, we'll calm down with this. But his other stuff. And uh, plug anything he has. So thank you, Steve. Oh, he's I, outside with a beautiful blonde. I'm in here getting bad reviews. Well, listen, I have Margin Call right here. Look at this. There you go. Dan looked up Margin. Margin Call. By J.C. Chan. It's a 2011, which means it was shot in 2010. So we're talking to probably five years ago. She, she looked way better. Uh, American independent drama film written and directed by J.C. Chander. Your thoughts on J.C. as a director, Jay? Awesome. He's friendly as hell. He hired me in... Most Violent Year as well. and uh, Okay, so this is the guy from Most Violent Year, too. Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that. Let's, let's do a little plug for you. Three Vi Most Violent Year is a movie that you're in as well as Taken 3. Taken 3 is going to be your commercial hit. My Violent Year will be your, your invitation to no. the to the. No, I don't, have, I don't have a, a huge parts. In, uh, you know, I've ha I had a bigger part. No, but still, you're, in, family, a, you're but in a movie that's, you the know. The cool thing about Margin Call, I got lucky, is uh, when I got to the set, I, I was the guy, the security guard who fires the people and walks them out of the office. When I got there... In the movie or yeah, at the audition? At, in, during the movie. <laughs> Stanley Tucci and... Uh, Love Stanley Tucci. And, and, and Demi okay. Moore right. were in this room where they're finding out what their golden parachute's going to be. Yeah. And Demi Moore asked J uh, JC a question, and I happened to be in the room, and he literally described... It's really cool. Uh, an actor at my level doesn't get to hear a director discuss the whole movie with two of the stars, explaining how his dad got fired that way and... And he worked on Wall Street, and I just sat there like, wow, this is cool. I got to see his whole vision verbally telling to the stars. Right. And that's how uh, you, know, you get to be friendly with the other actors there. But the only one that um, the only one that said goodbye to me and said thank you so much was uh, Demi Moore. It was very friendly on the set. But sure, that's good. But J.C. is awesome. He's, his crew it will fight to death for him. He's nice. He's not a jerk. He's like how a regular old guy. Is, uh, how old Great. is Demi Moore now, you think? What do you think? Uh, we were just watching about last night. It was on uh, the other She's got to be 53. 52. I'm 50, I'm about 51 or 52. Yeah, okay, for for that someone that age, she's smoking. But uh, look, we were watching about last night, the movie she did with Rob Lowe. She is so adorable in that. Right. So well, adorable. People get older, but I'm telling you, some people look, you know, look like shit when they get older. Jim Palumbo's quote of the day, people get older. 
No, I'm just. I, she, I agree with you. I I, I think that uh, she, for she had, 51, she had, most 51 year olds do not look she like was hot, Demi Moore looks. She body and she was sweet. Um, all right, uh, okay, listen, uh, we're going to wrap things up. This was a great show. I want to thank Brian Jones. He's always a great guest, great sense of humor for calling in his uh, insights into football. Uh, he agrees with me, by the way, with my lock of the week. Uh, Panthers get 11. He also likes the Packers. Jimmy thinks Dallas going to give him a, a run, though. That's, uh, I, I, I respect that, that uh, thought. I hate him, but I think the, I think Cowboys are going to win big. Tomorrow, guys. Uh, last day of the week for this first week. We're going to wrap up. It's been a great first week. But tomorrow, guys, you can call into the show. Uh, the number's 202-780-7848. That number again, 202-780-7848. Uh, you can, it's the number to call. You can watch Twitter. Watch Twitter tomorrow, and you can also leave voicemails in the meantime if you want to leave some funny voicemails. Uh, fucking with me or the show, go right ahead. We'll try to play whatever we can. And again, guys, it's uncensored. So the voicemails, if you want to be mean, try to be funny, let it loose. You can curse, cunt, fuck, whatever the fuck you want. Uh, that all starts tomorrow, 202-780-7848. We will tweet that as well, Jimmy. Uh, Danny, and uh, we're going to uh, let you know about that. Uh, it's going to be fun with the phone call aspect. Uh, also want to thank Joe Matarese. Uh Again, Fixing Joe is the name of his podcast. Go to the real Joe Matarese or thejoematarese.com. And Jim Palumbo, what do you want to plug? Anything? You got Taken 3. Taken and 3. I'm my viol- on, what was it? My Violent Year? My Most Violent Year. Most violent year. Right. I got a small part now. I got a little part in Taken 3. And I'm also going to be on the uh, Mysteries of Laura with Deborah Messing on January 21st. Deborah Messing. Another and I'm going to be on the show Broad City on Comedy Central, which Holy is Christ. Macho. How many fucking... Okay, Jesus. No, Broad City. <laughs> I, I, we had those chicks uh, on the, our old show, right? Broad City. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a great show if you don't like punchlines. And you go to JimmyPalumbo.com. <laughs> i gotta, I got to update it more. No, Jimmy Palumbo. No, Broad City is very good. Those, those chicks are smart, funny. They were good on my show, too. Uh, and flipping behind the dish... As our tech guy, thanks, but wearing a Brewers, a Milwaukee Brewers shirt. Which is which is awful and great. Inexplicable. Yeah. It's a baseball team I played for, like a summer baseball team. Oh, it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but they, they you get sued by the Brewers? It's the actual... Well, I mean, you know, we weren't selling them. <laughs> so you don't, you, know, used... you, like, you don't know who Gorman Thomas is. Yes, he does. Gorman, no. no oh, forget. really? Well, did he, he play with Robin Yell? That's, like he a, that's like wearing... He a... did. He played center field for All the right. 80... He I mean, I know center... Harvey's wall bangers. Let me tell you something. That, right, he was on Harvey's wall bangers. All right. He was the biggest wall banger. He played 39 homers. I just homers. don't know them by name. He had 39 homers in 82 when they lost to the Cardinals in the series. What was great about him, he was the center fielder for the American League champion, and he looked like a biker. <laughs> he looked like a biker. He didn't look like but Mickey you're Rivers. wearing a Brewer shirt, you have to know. <laughs> yeah. Ben Ogilvy was on that team, Robin, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? If your pitcher hangs some curves. You Jim Gantner, the number nine hitter at second base, hit 298 that year. They were a great team. Uh, okay, guys. Uh, that's the Artie Quitter Podcast. It's been a great uh, first few days. And again, I thank you so much uh, for signing up. Uh, you guys are loyal fans. The number to call tomorrow, 202 202- 780-7848. We'll tweet it. Go to artiequitter.com to sign up or tell your friends to sign up and go to artiequitter to follow me on Twitter. Uh, love you all. Take care. Brush your hair.